Hey everybody. Happy Monday. I'm going to say happy Monday because it literally is Monday, but like happy day to you. Yeah, that's really what I want to say. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so I have a little bit of a channeled message that um, I want to share. And as always, um, these messages that I find that I end up wanting to bring to the collective often come through my own realizations about myself and about my journey and all that stuff and all the realizations and epiphanies and understandings I come to as I walk my path. Yes. So, um, uh, first things first, before I go any further, I want to mention that keep in mind that this actually, this is probably going to end up on YouTube later. Um, just because I feel like it's a really important message for everybody to hear, but I want to give you guys first access to it. Yeah, so uh, for those of you that are watching this later on on Patreon, or I'm sorry, on YouTube, if you'd like to get premiere access to messages such as this one or anything else or just some extra contact ch content, check me out on Patreon, yeah? Sorry, guys, for those of you that are on Patreon, I had to give that little plug. Anyway, um, all right, so let's get to the message. So as you can see, I'm sitting here in my spot. Uh, for those of you that know, this is my spot. I'm sitting in my hammock in the backyard with the kids. I've got, well, that's Betty's old bumper. <laughs> Moving on. I've got Jinx on one side. I've got Orion on the other. And then we're surrounded by nature. And this is one of my favorite things to do, especially first thing in the morning. Um, I make a pot of coffee and then I come out here and I sit and I meditate and I just connect. And so I just finished the monthly readings for August and those were really powerful readings. Um, and they were, I mean, they felt really powerful while I was doing them, but I didn't realize the extent to how much it was taking out of me until I got to the very end of it and was just so incredibly drained. Um, so I've decided that I need to just take it a little easy because I'm in a space right now where I'm not really sure what direction I want to go in this month. For the month of June and the month of July, I had a clear vision. I knew what it is I wanted to accomplish throughout the month, um, and I was able to get that done. But this month, it feels a little bit different. Um, I'm not exactly clear on what it is I want to do this month, um, how it is I want to move forward. There's a lot that's up in the air. I'm feeling very spacey. So I've decided that I need to take some time to just sit down, disconnect, and reconnect with nature. Like disconnect from the collective necessarily and, and really connect with nature, connect with God, source, creator, connect with my higher self so I can start to develop a plan of action for what, for what the collective needs this month. Okay, so that's where I am right now. And so I'm very much in a void space, but in this void space, I had a little bit of an epiphany. And I, I think I want to title this message as my argument for solitude. So I've been spending a lot of time alone lately. And there is a very similar interesting connection that I want to make here. Um, for those of you that are that resonate with the Twin Flame journey, you most likely know of Enchanted World of Twin Flames. Her name is Sylvia, and I've been watching her for years while I've been on my journey with the Twin Flame situation. Uh, this is not a Twin Flame message. I just want to make a really funny correlation. At first, when I first moved here to Puerto Rico, um, I was still watching her regularly. I still watch her every once in a while just because I enjoy her messages and I enjoy her videos, but uh, it's less for like what's going on with the Divine Masculine. More, if I were to watch her video or any video like that, it's more about what's going on with me, right? <clears throat> and I, al I always resonate with her feminine side of things. But anyway, um, shortly after I moved here, I, it came out or she mentioned that she was moving to the mountains as well. 
And I thought that was a really crazy comment, a really crazy thing because we're both walking this twin flame journey. We're both twin flame readers and channelers. I don't really do it so much anymore, but, um, and we both had this element where we were both moved to the country ish, um, moved to somewhere that you're surrounded by nature and moved to the top of a mountain. And I mean, I'm, I moved to the Caribbean. I moved from Brooklyn to, to Puerto Rico, but I live in a mountain. Like I live uh, uh, at a pretty high piece, peak of this mountain in Rincon, Puerto Rico. So that was just really funny. And then I was watching one of her videos a few days ago and she mentioned how she's going through a little bit of an issue, but she rarely leaves her house. And when I heard that, I was like, Sylvia, we're right there. Because I, I lately have been in this energy of rarely leaving my apartment. Like going out, driving down the mountain to go to the grocery store and get stuff that I need like to survive and then going straight back home. And it's even gotten to the point where I really don't even want to hang out. Like I don't even like hanging out. And a part of me is getting a little bit worried, a little bit concerned about that. Like am I becoming so antisocial that I won't be able to hang out with friends anymore but um I've gotten in a point in a place where being out in public being surrounded by a bunch of people being subject to small talk and meaningless conversation is so abhorrent to me I literally would rather sit on my own, surrounded by nature, with my cats, than be around people. But you see, the crazy thing about it is, I still want to connect with people. I still want to be a channeler for people. I still want to be a reader for people. I still want to be a guide for people. I still want to be a, I still want to communicate with people. I just don't want to be around them. <laughs> but anyway, so, I've really been settling into this energy <clears throat> for the last month, straight up for the last month. And it's really wonderful. I've and, and it's helped me to get to a point where I am being able to love myself more. Why is that? Well, as I've been spending all this time alone with myself actually I'm not alone I have my cats I have neighbors but I'm also not alone because I have spirit with me but I have been consciously focusing on connecting with my higher self and connecting with my inner child and so that's where a lot of this energy of inner child work and reparenting ourselves and everything like that that's where that's been coming up and that's how it's been expressing itself in my life and as I've been spending all of this time with myself I have been able to get to understand myself more. I've been able to love myself more. And I've started to understand that I've been in a certain holding pattern by the universe. Something that has been kind of plaguing me my whole life is I feel like I've been always just like I've been on that. I've been part of a generation that, you know, all kinds of wonderful stuff happened before and we had so much to look forward to but then that moment right before we get there right before we get to experience it ourselves you know because we're finally of age or we finally reach that point in our lives this that and the third somehow some way something goes wrong and it's no longer available to us the plight of the millennial right um but for me specifically, it just feels like I've been in this holding pattern. I've been stagnant. I've been stuck. I haven't been able to move forward. I haven't been able to, you know, accomplish the things that I've wanted to do, accomplish the things that I've told were, that I've been told were possible for me or were available to me and this, that, and the third. Like when I was a kid, I had this mindset. I really truly believed that the universe was against me. I used to, I literally used to use those words, those exact words, the universe is against me, but it's not. I've been in a holding pattern 
And this is very connected to, very similar to the message that I shared on the community tab on Fa on YouTube, uh, a message from Phil Good in which he talked about how, you know, your physical eyes have deceived you and you're not going to get, if you're walking this path of ascension, you're not going to get what it is you want. The universe, your higher self is not going to give, give you what it is you want out of ego. And in this time period of solitude, I really started to understand that message. Because there has been so much that I've wanted to do or wanted to accomplish in life, just like anyone else, right? I'm not any different than anybody else, okay? But in this moment of solitude, I today got to the point where I could ask myself, <clears throat> Is that really what you wanted or why did you want that? But not only could I ask that of myself, but I could answer it honestly. Why did you want that, Eric? Why is that your goal? Why are you looking for that specific form of success? And the answer to that is because it validates my ego. It validates me. It is, if I were to receive that, if I were to achieve that, it would validate me in the eyes of everyone else around me, especially those that looked down upon me, that judged me, that made fun of me, that don't believe in me, that look at me and call me a train wreck, this, that, and the third. Like, I'm, I'm a mess. I, I, I can't do anything right. I, I, blah, blah, all of that shit, right? All the people that doubted me even and most specific most specifically people in my immediate family that i had the view of or vision of them looking at me like i'm a mess like i'm a train wreck like there's something wrong with me but there isn't there never has been i am 34 years old and like many others of my generation, I feel like I'm going nowhere, that I have accomplished nothing, and that there's no hope for me in the future. There's no hope for any of us in the future. Now, I don't necessarily believe that. I'm not sitting here saying that I'm all doom and gloom and I don't believe that there's any hope for the future, but many of us in this generation can't help but at least have those feelings or those thoughts cross our minds because of what we've dealt with over the last 30 to 40 years as a society, right? Okay. But in this moment of solitude, I've really been able to ask myself the question and to look at all of the goals that I had and all the things that I wanted to accomplish and all of the ways that I had identified myself as or with. All of that didn't necessarily come from a true desire within my heart to move in that direction, to accomplish that, to this, that, and the third. That was all for validation. Mosquitoes. It was literally all for validation, guys. To prove that I'm worthy of something, to prove that I'm not a mess, to prove that, you know, I can accomplish, I can do, I can be something. I, and like case in point, this mindset that we deal with as a society right now, I remember talking to one of my cousins a few months ago. I think it was like around May, around my birthday. No, it may have been after that. It was a few months ago. And it was one of those rare occasions where, I mean, I don't really talk to people in my family anymore. I don't really talk to anybody. <laughs> but it was one of those rare occasions where I was talking to one of my cousins who I grew up with in like I knew we knew each other. We were very close when me and my sister were young, really, really young. But life happens, shit happens. I kind of pulled away from the family, which happens all the time. Anyway, um, I was talking to one of my cousins and she has kids and she was saying something to me about, you know, one of her daughters, well, her daughter uh, is very active, right? all kinds of great stuff but the mindset from my cousin that my mind the, one of the mindset 
that my cousin is operating from is the narrative of well you know we got to keep these kids busy or we got to we got to do this that and the third because you're not about to be up in here living life not doing anything like you got to be doing something oh shit so you mean i can't like just be no you have to accomplish something so then that leads me to the question of okay so why am i accomplishing something like, what does that mean for you? Ah, that's right, status. Recognition. If your child doesn't grow up to amount to anything, then that's a poor judgment on you because you're a bad parent or some shit like that. Right? And I don't want anyone to think that I'm like bashing my cousin or anyone else in my family or anything like, this is, this is universal. This is our society, you guys. Okay, so, and you know, what helped me come to this realization was not just the fact that I've been <clears throat> taking this time in solitude, right? It's the fact that things that I've wanted from ego just never seem to work out. And as I'm sitting here, as I have this time with myself to contemplate all these things, I can literally ask myself that question. Why does it seem that things don't really work out the way I had planned or the way I expected? Because it's all coming from ego. It's not coming from a place of higher self, of higher vision. It's not coming from a place of being in full alignment with my soul and following through with that plan. It's all coming from what I, ex what I have acquired growing up as an incarnated being in this time period. And the ways that I've identified with as my ego with, what I have identified my ego with from the desire to fit in, the desire to be accepted, the desire to be acknowledged, to the desire to feel like I'm not a pariah. So naturally I gravitated to things that I was naturally good at singing, dancing, acting, writing music, being somewhat physically active. You know, I did sports for a little bit, but all that kind of stuff. I wanted to be a recording artist as a kid, like Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson. I wanted to be on stage singing and dancing and doing fucking ridiculously awesome choreography and making mind-blowing music videos and going on world tours and releasing albums and all that stuff. But why did I want that? Because it was validation. If I had achieved that, then that would prove to my parents and my family and everyone else around me that I'm not a fuck up. That there actually is value to me. That I can come through here and I can make a shit ton of money, you know, and be rich and famous and have all this status just like them or just like the way they want it or what, like, that was the reason why I wanted that. And in this moment of solitude, I've been, I've been able to allow things to fall away, but to then realize why they were falling away, why things didn't work out the way I wanted them to. Why certain things aren't working out the way I want them to work out now. And the more I feel myself pushing for something to happen, you know, it, the more I realize that it's just coming from ego. And what helped me come to this realization today, the reason why I am sitting here in this get up, I guess, I'm not really put together. I'm sitting here in my pajamas. My hair's not really done. I have to shave. I didn't get all pretty for this. And I'm planning on putting this out on YouTube because people need to hear this message. I'm not manicured. I'm not all gussied up. I didn't set the lighting. I don't have a fabulous set or, or, or 
play background around me other than the nature that's around me. That's great. But this is just real raw me right now. And I don't care. You know why? This morning, I decided that I was going to take all the nail polish off. I didn't do my nails all week last week. I recorded all of the August readings with a janky ass manicure because I didn't fucking care. What was more important was the message, right? So this morning I took all my nail polish off, fingers and toes, and cut my nails and filed them down. And I looked at my nails today. I looked at my hands. I looked at my hands today. And for the first time in the longest time, ever since I started painting my nails again regularly, which started right around the time that I started my channel, Mm. Excuse me. Um, that was 2018. So that was three years ago, right? Three and a half years ago now. I have regularly, every regularly, every time they read, every time they needed them, every time they started to chip, I would redo it for three years. I mean, many of you ladies out here have been getting your nails done for decades. Like, obviously that okay, but that's not the point. <laughs> the point is that. For, a longest, for the longest time, I couldn't even bear to look at my hands without my nails being done. And I always did it black, matte black, because that's what I felt confident in. But today, I was able to look at my nails, look at my hands and say, oh my God, I have beautiful hands. I have beautiful toes. I hate my toes, I hate my feet, especially my toenails, they're gross. <laughs> okay, they're gross. But I looked at them today and I was like, whoa, I actually appreciate my hands. I actually appreciate my body. I actually appreciate myself. And so that's part of the reason why I'm sitting here in my pajamas, recording this message, putting myself out for the world to see because I love myself, I don't care. How I look doesn't fucking matter. What's matter, what matters is the message, the vibe. I think that's it. So now I sit here, I relax. I thank God for the blessing of my life every day, the roof over my head, the food, in my fridge and my ability to connect with all of you every day so I sit I contemplate and I wait for what's next and what's right and every day I am consciously focusing on connecting with myself when I feel myself getting into those moments where my ego is raging I want this I want that I want this I want that why is this not happening why don't I have this this that and the third every time my ego starts to rage I stop I take a step back and I focus on connecting with my higher self and just staying there because I know that my higher self God, source, creator, the universe actually really does love me and has been holding me back from all of these things that I said that I've wanted or I thought that I wanted because it was not right. It was protection. This is one of those situations where rejection is definitely God's protection. Because had I gotten into the music industry the way I wanted to, where do you think I would have ended up? Chances are I probably would have ended up as a complete and total wreck. I mean, look at what's going on with Britney Spears. That's just one example. Britney Spears, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston. I mean, the list goes on. Michael Jackson, George Michael, Phil Collins. I mean, the entertainment industry, no, <laughs> no. And, and, and did any of you ever hear the, the situation or the, the, the term or have every, uh, there's, there's an understanding that I came to. I heard this a long time ago, but I totally understand it. Those of us that really 
end up getting into or wanting to have or wanting to have a career in entertainment. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but there's a vast majority of us that do it because of a deep need for validation and acceptance. And people in the entertainment industry in power, they prey on that. I mean, that's not unique to the entertainment industry. That's our society as a whole, but this isn't even about, this isn't even supposed to be about the entertainment industry, but like, whatever. So this is my argument for solitude. Because if I haven't been spending time, so much time in solitude, if I had been instead distracting myself by being social, I would not have come to this understanding. I would not be able to sit here in this light, in my pajamas, talking to you guys about it right now. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>